322 days have passed since the Black Ferns were crowned world champions for a record-breaking sixth time. And today, they play their first match on home soil since the grand final. The Wallaroos travel to Hamilton for the first time in their history and are striving for another first with a win over the Black Ferns. No my and my welcome into FMG Stadium for the second test in the two-match series for the Laurie O'Reilly Cup. I'm Taylor Johnson and joining me in co-commentary is Black Fern number 176, Honey Hiramu Smiler Tenakwe. Oh, tenakwe, Taylor, Tena Koto Kato, Eta Iwi, and let's take a look at the Black Ferns team. It's a beefed up front row with Murray, Pontenby, and Rule up front. Young Gun Roos teams up with the long awaited return of Charmaine Smith in the locking pair with plenty of physical presence from Bremner and co captain Simon on the flanks and the dynamic Mikaeli Tu at number eight. To the backs, Marina Tohunu and co captain Demant will guide the team around with Brunt and Duplessis, two powerhouse midfielders. Plenty of pace and flair from Baha Kulo and Paul on the wings and the talented Maliepo in the back. <coughs> Keep an eye out for Beliko and Sa'i with Martha Matele who is set to make their debut today. A special moment for their play, those players and their whanau. Absolutely being rewarded for their fine form in the Farah Palmer Cup. And while this Australian team, they went down 50-0 in the first test in the Lawyer O'Reilly series. So Jay Tregoni has made five changes to the run on side for the last test against Canada. No Grace Hamilton has forced a reshuffle in the loose boards with Lini dropping into the blind side from lock to cover Masters who shifts into number eight to anchor the pack. And Naikama is elevated from the bench to start alongside her captain and locking partner in Leonard. To the back, Shigoni has elected to use Dallinger over McKenzie at 10 and Paul Mare returns in the 12 jersey as the most experienced player in the park in this test. And a debut beckons for the promising Waratahs loose forward Leilani Nathan. Well, let's head down sideline for the weather conditions with Blackburn Christina Sue. Tēnā kōrua, kei ngā kai mā takitaki o te tī o te tā, tēnei te mihi nui ki a koutou katoa. Well, it's been raining here all day in Kirikirirō, and you wouldn't really know it as it started to clear. There's quite a strong westerly, which will no doubt will have play a part in today's tactics. Underfoot, the pitch has been a bit cut up from the men's curtain raiser game before, but I can tell you that the Black Ferns have won the toss, and Wallaroos will be kicking off playing left to right, as you see it on your screen. Thank you so much, Christina. Well, the Wallaroos have never beaten the Black Ferns in 24 attempts, but it's been well documented. The player voice asking for more resourcing and binding together, and that really can be the making of a team. You can see there they lost to Canada 45-7, a really good win over the USA, but there's that big loss to the Black Ferns earlier. And they would have absolutely loved to get some vengeance here today. This Australian team. But... The Wallaroos, while well, they will look to call on the experience of someone like Ashley Masters to bring her physical prowess to this match. She made her debut in 2014 against the Black Ferns at Rotorua and has fought many battles against her trans-Tasman rivals. Her and Paul Mare are playing in their 24th test and are the most experienced campaigners on the park. She picked up six turnovers in the Pacific Four series earlier this year, which is the most out of anyone in all four teams, so keep an eye out on her come ruck time. And well, for the Black Ferns, first time they are playing at home since winning the Rugby World Cup. You can see the crowd eager to see their team, they have won the last 15 games, the Black Ferns. Great to see a good crowd here in Kirikiridor, Hamilton. But it's an emotional afternoon for 32-year-old policewoman Charmaine Smith after a four-year absence from the Black Jersey, forced to abruptly retire on medical grounds due to a neck injury, decided to make the move home to Northland, started a family, and then all of a sudden, her neck had all cleared up, self-corrected. As we sit back and await in anticipation with the rest of FMG Stadium.
The challenge has been set by the Black Ferns and the Wallaroos marching forward during the haka. And honey, it's such a special moment to be able to do the haka in front of your family and friends, but also against the opposition. And hugely emotional for the three debutants in Chris Baliko, Leila Sayi and Martha Mateli. You can see the emotion, you can see the energy and the effort that they put into the haka. It means so much to them. They lay down that challenge, and then when kickoff comes, it's time to get the job done. The referee today, Kat Roche from the USA, assisted by Natasha Ganley and Jess Ling, and the TMO is Aaron Patterson. Thanks. Well, as we mentioned earlier, the first test in the Laurie O'Reilly Cup was 50-0 to the Blackburns over in Australia, but as both coaches alluded yep. to, a different side here this afternoon Thanks. in Hamilton. They'll be looking to make amends, and as we always say, looking to get their first win over the Blackfords. A tough outfit, reigning world champions. <laughs> Kara Stollinger gets us underway. Draw forth just in front of that 22 metre line and Brunt with a first carry and a physical tackle coming in from Tolakai. Wanting to set the scene early and bring that physical dominance. Lovely, strong first up run for Duplessis. Immediately, they try and get the ball into the back line and unlock Mali Epo, who has Kennedy Simon running off her shoulder. They recycle, ball hits the ground. Bit of miscommunication, but Ruse is there. But Eno Tohinu continues to go right. Demet puts up the kick. Looking for a 50-22. This might bounce favorably for her. In fact, it's just going to go a couple of centimetres too far. Yep. Oh, it's a strong start strong from the Blackburns. You can see their intent to really move the ball, to get players strong running to space. And just the position of the kicking game of Ruahe Demant, it's going to be vital leading into this game. It is slippery, so stability, yeah, we're holding our weight. First scrum of the game between these two teams, front rows and Chetham Talakai I'm and take Kapani and going up out. against Murray, who is just with her second start in her career for the Blackburns. And Ponson being ruled outside her, the Matatu in Canterbury stalwarts. Crouch! Let's go! Bind! Set! Morgan feeds a scrum, Australia hold up steady. Bit of a bobble from Dallinger. Running in between two defenders, trying to commit them. Competing at the breakdown of the Blackburns and changing. Her mind there was Masters. Trying to get a pick off the back of that ruck and get some good go for it. And Kapani. Continuing to that left side this time, it's Cheatham. Again, persisting down the left edge. Strong carry from Talakai. Runs over the top of Rule. Don't often see that. Again, these front rowers working hard in the opening stages. Another carry from Cheatham. This time they put boot to ball. Not really chasing that. And it's in the hands of Caitlin Fahakoro. Gives it to Mali Epo. So dangerous on her feet. Jumps out of the first tackle. Still going Mali Epo. First appearance since 2021. Had many injury struggles. Good to see her on the park. And another good tackle coming in from Nagama. Smith, her first touch. Stopped in her tracks. This Australian defence has been much better in this game than we saw in the first. But this time, Bright just getting rid of Morgan. Murray on the angled carry. But the defence is up to the task at the moment for the Wallaroos. But the Black Ferns certainly asking plenty of questions early as the man... Takes it to the line, ball in two hands. Kennedy Simon with the show and go. Clip down around the ankles, Kennedy Simon, but they're inside the 22 now. Are ah, the Blackburns quick hands from Rule to Smith? Got options left and right. They'll go to the right hand side, skip pass from Demet. Trying to get it into the hands of Paul. It's gone backwards from the referee. So ball is still available. 
Inside that 22, the Blackburn attack will just keep storming. And a miscommunication there, but it's still going to hang up here for Amy Dupla as he holds the phone while she toe hacked it a little bit too far forward. But it all just kind of fell away. Well, some great early signs there from the Blackburns. They're willing to shift the ball early. You can see the running lines. They're running out weak shoulders, trying to get on the inside. The seams of the Wallaroos defence. Just a little too hard of a nudge there for Amy Duplessis. Otherwise, she had a clear run for that line. This has been an exciting Come off. opening four minutes, hasn't it? Both sides wanting to play with the ball, throwing it around, showing some good touches and patience. So a little bit of an injury here might be a bit of a stinger to the shoulder on Talakai. Should be a huge loss if they were if she was to go off. But as you see there, physio giving her some treatment. Hopefully she's back in, back to her feet. That's always good signs. Oh, what an opening start what from up? both sides. It's been entertaining what in this first four minutes. It's a bit slower there, Jess, on your comps. Slower, thank you. We'll just wait till water's off. Where's mentioned in the build-up. Dallinger played all her rugby here. Time back on! One or two Cyclones. Like Chelsea Semple said, often one of the best players on the part. Took her talents to Australia. We're hoping to try and get the first win for the Wallaroos over the Black Ferns. And it's the woman in black hot on attack. Crystal Murray does well to reach down, grab the pass, but they've... Stripped the ball backwards. It's knocked on from Crystal Murray. So Australia been tested early on defence, honey, but they're sticking to it. Well, Crystal Murray is probably one of the most skillful props going around right at the moment. But unfortunately, this time round, just pushes that pass. Probably just needed to go to ground, Last build a bit more good. continuity. They've done well in terms of building pressure in previous phases. And now we get to see the first scrum for this test match. It's good defence there from Leonard as well, the captain. They would have obviously done some homework on the Black Ferns and know that they're playing that offload Crouch. game. So they will look to have one go along the, around the legs and the other wrapping the ball. Set! Again, that Australian scrum holds nice and strong and it allows the backs to set up a move and a big hit coming in from Kennedy Simon on her home patch here. Yes. And the Chiefs Manawa. Lini and Leonard working hard. They look to top find some territory with the Wallaroos. And it's almost collected by the winger, but knocked on into touch, as you heard from the referee. Putting up the contestables, honey. Line out. Line out. Line out. Yeah, look, it's a good option here. Look at this big hit coming in once again from Kennedy Simon. Such a ruthless player really leads her team by example. We've seen the, the first scrum, Don't walk which was successful for the Wallaroos. And now the Black Ferns, they get a shot at trying out their line-up. Ponsonby finds her target in Smith. They pass it off the top. Here goes to Matt, gets the pass out to Michele. To, ooh, little tip on to Duplessis. They're going to come back to the left-hand side this time, always running with lots of time and space, this Blackburn team standing with such depth. Challenging though, uh, the Wallaroos at rut time, Roos is forced to come in and help. Again, stopped in her tracks. Marino Tsohinu, little fake step and run from Crystal Murray, gets the pass to Mali Apple, who's had some nice touches since returning to the black jersey. Numbers galore though out on the right hand side. Brunt, Brunt just keeps the ball in two hands, using her footwork. Glops off Morgan. Loses the ball forward though, just shows how dangerous she can be when you give her too much space. And in that instance there, honey, it was a four on one overlap. Yeah, mature beyond her years, isn't she? Such a well rounded athlete. Huge skills, look at the power in that. Unfortunately, yeah, it's a bit of a knock on, on there, but time. look, you got to give credit to the Australian defence. Yeah, we're good. They're throwing everything at the Black Ferns, who have had the bulk of the position for this opening eight minutes. I agree with you there, Hans, in terms of the defence. 
They've been relentless, this Australian side. First four Crunch. people closest to the breakdown are pushing up, but they're selling some space in those 15s channels if the Blackburns can Six. find it. This time off the back of the scrum is Masters, but she's now lost the ball forward. So we have another scrum, but this time it is a very, very good position to attack from, honey, on the 22 metre line, bang smack in the middle of the field. Yeah, midfield scrum for the Black Ferns off that error. And there's been a couple of early errors coming in from both teams, and that's just showing the physicality. Unfortunately, Masters Make there. Sure. The ball's Three, probably sure stripped a little bit from pressure. Kennedy Simon, Show but look, this is great forward, attacking up, position you. for the Black Ferns. You can see them. They're split out wide with Rua Hay Demant sitting in behind the scrum. So she'll have the luxury of picking to go out on right with the likes of Brunt and Amelie Duplessis, both powerhouses in the midfield. Crouch! Bind! Set! Two, two, Big push coming in from Australia. Michele Tu goes to the right. Demet with the pass. Gets on the outside of Paul Maria Does Maliepo going in and out and then just straight forward over the top of Masters was Paul. Ball is available. They continue to go to the left. Amy Rules. Marino Tohinu to Demet. Passing it deep, fast and strong pass from Bryant to Duplessis. He fires it over the top, can't quite connect with Vahakoro. Does brilliantly though to keep the ball in play. So Simon holds on to the ball, still inside the 22. Smith. And this time a pick and go from the ruck and then the offload to Kennedy. Simon, Crystal Murray, heads up rugby. Now they go to the strong frame of Mikhail Tu'u. The Australian defence trying to roll around. They're going to try and go up the guts, Tackle though, the Black Ferns. Australia stuck inside that ruck. They change direction, go to the left. Duplessis, well read in defence, though. Again, they go to the right-hand side, looking at different options, but the yellow wall is holding up strong. Murray, Murray inches closer. She might be held up here. In fact, it's over. First try for Crystal Murray in this game, and New Zealand take the early lead 5 0. Well, heads off to the front row. She's earned her spot back in the starting lineup for the Black Ferns, and this is why she's heavily involved in the lead up to this try. Just great distribution skills. You saw earlier the little offload in contact, and then here she gets herself in position. Takes it on herself to go through. She's got enough power and pace One to minute. open the scoring for the Black Ferns. Murray's such a skilled, powerful, dynamic player. She's smart. She knows when to take her, her breaths and take in, you know, all the moments of when to rest. Like you said, Hans, she was the one that was influential in starting that. She was able to finish it. Great start here from the Black Ferns, and you sense now that the Wallaroos defence is starting to tie up. So they did well for the opening 10 minutes. Whether they can keep on the pace with the Black Ferns, it'll be interesting to see. As you see there, kids are loving it. Great atmosphere here in Kirikuriro. Brunt. She loves the collision area, does Brunt. And the passes just have been a little bit wayward, not as crisp as they usually are for the Black Ferns. So it is the Colorado's ball, and they really have been starved of possession. It's going backward. First so a good opportunity here for the Wallaroos to really launch their attack because they've had minimal ball in hand. Yeah, field position is vital for the Wallaroos. Scrum here. And they'll need to get themselves into the strike zone to really yeah, get their on your back, but I won't momentum work. going, hold on to the ball, build some phases, build some pressure That's up fine. against the Black Ferns. They've got some real good strike power out wide, especially in the likes of Laurie Kramer, the experienced veteran. Just come back into the fold. We look to see them use out wide or utilize the kicking ability Crouch. of Karis Dallinger. Set! Two, three! Yeah. 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 
Morgan goes to the right. There's Wong. Saves the ball. They continue to challenge the right hand side. Masters does well to stay on her feet. Not on ball. Looking right and left, decides to go to the left hand side. This time it's Kapani. Does brilliantly just to fight. Stay on her feet, but doesn't want to be held up here. And she has created a wall. And we turn that ball over, and Honey just not picking the right decision when to go down and when to stay up on your feet. Well, it was exciting to see the likes of Eva Kapani take on Crystal Murray in that initial ball carry. And she seemed to get some momentum here. You see the initial hit and spin, starts to pump her feet, but unfortunately doesn't find the ground. And that's just the experience coming in there from the likes of Charmaine Smith. So good to Let's see go. her back out there and her locking partner in Maya Kawana Kaulani Roos. Like you said, the experience, the locking pair, they knew to hold her up, hit them all, force a turnover. Leonard was a bit poor Coach. in that. Sometimes they say tackle the tackler. She was ineffective Five. in that and hence a turnover here for the Blackburns. Set! <laughs> I said it was fine when we're hitting well, Like I alluded to way, earlier, back, Crystal okay? Murray, Thank just you. in her second start playing in her 11th test match today and really rewarded for form in the Farah Palmer Cup, honey, and quite a few players rewarded, like we've seen our debutants of Sae and Veliko. But how good has Crystal Murray been this season? Oh, immense for her Northland FPC team. And it's really see, good to see coach Alan Bunting picking Fight. players on form through this FPC, giving them opportunity. We've seen some real growth and they've earned the jersey, they've earned the right to be out there. In this Australian scrum really testing the Black Ferns and oh, Mali Airport reached out, couldn't quite bring it in. And it's her first start at fullback. And as I mentioned before, 2021, the last time she played, good to see her back. But lots of errors creeping into this game. Yeah, probably a little bit guilty yep. of going lateral there off that scrum. You see, they were willing to take on the numbers out wide there, and Patricia Maliopo has an impressive skill set. One on one, she is hard to defend. But once again, the Wallaroos, they've abstained pressure, and they get a really good opportunity there. So it's good to see, hope to see them really start to build some pressure, hold on to the ball, be patient. Well, Australia have not entered the 22 Fight! of the Black Ferns yet. Really tells the story. They have not had opportunities. Yeah. And we'll listen in. Yeah, Another scrum reset here. Out, because you're just taking away all our space. We're head on head. We've got no space. Crouch! Bind! Set! Two, two, three. And go. And go. This time the Black Ferns win a scrum penalty and it's Crystal Murray getting all the pats on the back. We just mentioned her fine form and she's really paying dividends to Alan Bunting for taking a chance on her tonight. Oh, that's a huge win for yeah, the Black Ferns, really. The Wallaroos, they've been operating at around 94% scrum success. And to get that one over them will be a huge momentum builder get up, get up. as they work their way into this, into their half. Stayed in touch the whole time. If she jumps from touch... Just executing her core role, fine. isn't she, Just Murray? Shows what she can do when the ball's in play. But when you lose head prop... You can scrum effectively, you know, no you're the ultimate package and she sure in. is having some game, Crystal Murray. Goal, keep the gap. Goal, keep the gap. Ponsonby finds Smith again at the back of the line out. Good passing through the backfield for the Black Ferns. Again, Brunt uses a battering ram at the moment in this game. Ponsonby, pop pass on the inside to demand, but she advantage. spills that ball forward and errors galore at the moment for both teams always just trying to force that extra pass and look for some space but it's hurting them so australia Stay will now look to try one. and get out of their own 22. talakai just marching a couple meters forward 
Lini asking them to get on her backside and stripping that ball is Kennedy Simon, but it's another knock on. So we will come back for a scrum. And given the wonderful weather conditions here, honey, the amount of handling errors is quite surprising. Instead, we are going to go down sideline to Chelsea Remner, who is joining us. Good to have you, Chelsea. What has been the mentality heading into this game? Kia ora. Yeah, we knew that it's going to be a massive battle out front. Um, Aussie have really bought it this first 15, 20 minutes. Um, as you can see, you know, there's lots of momentum shifts and um, yeah, heaps of physicality out there. Chelsea, did you have any advice for your sister getting out there? <laughs> no, I just said have fun and enjoy it, which it looks like she's doing. Oh, what have you witnessed from this game so far? I mean, Australia haven't had too much ball in hand, but the Black Ferns are still being challenged. Yeah, I think um, obviously our set piece is going really well. Um, but, you know, out there on the field, like I said earlier, they're bringing it. Um, heaps of physicality and, yeah, just going back to our basics. And, um, yeah, we've got lots of respect for Aussie and know that they've, you know, they're bringing it all out there today. Thank you so much for your time, Charles. Thank you. Well, the Black Ferns, as she mentioned, their set piece is starting to go well and they, the, the turnover from a very, very strong scrum. They've now got an advantage. Brilliant work by their four pack. Again, numbers. Molly Apple scoops the ball up from her feet and scores. And what a fairy tale start to her resurgence in the black jersey. Patricia Molly Apple with the second try of the game. Oh, it's so good to see Patricia Maliepo back in the black jersey. The young 20-year-old bags her second try of her career, but you have to give the hats off to the scrum and the forwards that bowled over the, the Australian scrum a little bit earlier, open up the space for the backs, and she goes straight and direct, gets over the line for the Black Ferns. How good is the crowd down there, Christina? Oh, it's really good, especially obviously when you get those momentum shifts or you get those clean breaks. They go crazy down here. You spoke about it before, Taylor. It's actually really windy down here. The sun's shining, which is positive, but there is the wind starting to pick up, as you can see in the flyaways there <laughs> of the hair. But you know what? There was a really good line from Millie Airport, which was deserving of that try. And like you said, Hunt really enjoys seeing it back in black. Lua Hay Demand playing in her 30th game in the Black Fern jersey. And you can see the win and the impact on that kick there, but it was successful. So 14 0. The Black Ferns leading Australia after 20 minutes. thousand tickets sold here for FMG Stadium and a couple thousand walk-ups as well. And the sun is starting to shine. And what is a wonderful game so far, but Australia really need to get their hands on the ball. And again, Brunt, chop tackle this time. Murray passes it in behind to demand face ball. Oh, wow. see what she offloaded it and kicked it at the same time. And a tackle. Supreme bit of skill there from Duplessis. Marina Tohino finds Mikael Atul just tucks the head and rumbles forward. Lovely intricate pass from Marina Tohino to Vahakoro unleashing her winger. Duplessis is there in support. Great cover tackle coming in from Wong. But a brilliant ball from Marina Tohino just fooled everyone in that defensive line. Steaming onto it was Murray, gets it to front. Well taken care of again by guys. Masters. Bremner. Alana Bremner there. Sister Chelsea still nursing a hand injury. You still have penalty advantage, Black. Ponsonby with her ball, or hands on the ball. Murray in behind her, and a little fake coming in from Charmaine Smith. She's trying to get in over that ball, Australia. That's fine. Back Won it offside. back, but they were under a penalty advantage. Four offside. Thanks. Four offside. Yeah, you're good. Well, the penalty has been awarded. 
right in front of the sticks on the 22 metre line, well and truly within Demant's range, but they are going to put the hammer down and go for the sideline, and I like that decision, honey. Oh, they're back in their skill set, aren't they? They're willing to bank up the numbers and fives, and look at this inside ball from Rihiana Marino Tauhunu here, and then the afterburners from Vahakolo, she finds Duplessis. They're really starting to open up the Wallaroos defence, and now they get another opportunity here, line out inside their 22. Pontevi has been accurate in their favour. That back jumper with Smith. Michaela Tull gets her ball in hand. Brunt chopped down three metres short from the line. Advantage. Forwards are going to roll up their sleeves and pick and go. Here comes Ponsonby. Will she be rewarded for her line-out accuracy? She's held up, in fact, knocks the ball on. But they've got a penalty advantage, and the penalty's really starting to creep up for Australia. Just make sure you're getting all the way behind that last foot. Thank you. Time back on. Scrum. Well, they're going to take the scrum here. And once again, they're just continuing to throw everything at this team. Look at the great run here from Sylvia Brunt. And then they all pile in. Unfortunately, Ponsonby backs herself to get over. She's held up. But once again, they get another opportunity. The scrum on their five. Feel all the momentum really flowing in the Black Ferns' way as the Wallaroos' defence starts to tie up. It was the defensive work of Sarah Nagama Five. elevated from the bench into the starting team. Set. And they're actually teammates, Ponsonby and her, and Matatu and Super Rugby Opiki. Balls in the back, use it! Balls available though at the back for the Black Ferns. Mikhail Tool picks it up with one hand on that five metre line. Marina Tohinu comes to the left, Murray gets it to Duplessis, good footwork, left foot step coming in from the South African born centre. They continue through Amy Rule. Tackle away! Assisted by Smith Thank and Ponsonby. Marina Tohinu running in on that angle was Roos. Trying to attack that rough there counter. was Talakai. Another carry from Mikael Tuu. Really trying to ask questions of the Australian defence. They're there in numbers though. Crystal Murray is liking her option. She's going to go for a pick and go, looking for her second try. Crystal Murray <laughs> held up. Goal line. Goal line dropout. And so. well, the Wallaroos, they'll take a lot of confidence out of that. <laughs> yeah. Sub. Look at that front row goal. of the Wallaroos and Cheatham and Kapani. they have been asked to do a whole lot of work. And they are rising to the challenge. Look at them all in numbers there. Okay. There's no room for Crystal Murray to go through this time. She's off the field. Come back on. Yeah, you've got a substitute here. Laurie Kramer looks like she's gone for the day. And I know when she was going in for that tackle on the try line, she appeared to have a bit of an injury. So the young 18-year-old. In the 23 jersey, Maleka will be her replacement. Well, this is actually the first game Maleka has been on the bench. Has started every other test, so she's used to playing big minutes. But the Black Ferns, again, hot on attack. Didn't quite get the distance on that restart, so under pressure once more are the Wallaroos. And Ponsonby has spilt that once more. On. So they're still under pressure, though, and they are still yet to get inside the 22 of the Black Ferns. Yeah. Georgia Ponsonby be disappointed with that one. You no, know, we've already seen the skill set weight, yeah. of the Black Ferns forwards. You can see them really looking to keep the ball alive, give the offloads. They have the luxury of having such high skill set, but that skill set needs to be executed under pressure. And then unfortunately it doesn't come off this time round. So like Laurie Kramer's got Crouch. a bit of a knee injury. She gave Renee Holmes a bit of a hug Crouch. on the sideline, but the WXV is coming up, so Set. they'll be looking to nurse that and get her back on the field in a month's time. Australia, what can they do with some possession? And in fact, they've knocked the ball on. It was Pumare. You could see it on the ground. Oh, she's one of the most experienced players on the field and just couldn't hold on to it, but it was a great tackle. Yeah, look at this. Just low body position coming in there, Kennedy Simon. 
never really get, lets anybody get past to does she? But Pumari, she is one of the experienced players. She would have been looking just to settle that run to get them some good field position to look to kick wide. Okay. On the attacking side. This is Amy Rolls no. down at the moment, getting some attention to that left shoulder. Let's hope it's nothing too serious. Be a bit of a stinger. Well, the WXB is coming up here in New Zealand. Please get along to the games and support women's rugby. Some fantastic teams coming down here. England, France, these two sides. And as Christina Sue mentioned, people will not be wanting to get injured in this game with their sights heavily set on what is going to be a great inaugural competition, honey. Oh, huge, huge competition. And how good to have it back here in Aotearoa once again especially following the Rugby World Cup and having the big guns in England and France come back down here. Time back on. It's going to be a bit of a revenge match for them. The Black Ferns will no doubt be up for the challenge as well as the Wallaroos. Crouch! Premium attacking opportunity Crouch! here for the Black Ferns and while they've spent an age down Six! in the 22 of the Australian team they've made Four times as many tackles as the Black Ferns. Here comes Mikael Little, five metres short. And what a brilliant turnover for Australia. As I mentioned, they have made 81 tackles to New Zealand's 21. And they come away with the turnover. Brilliant work. Well, that is great work from the Wallaroos. Especially to bring down Liana Mikael Little here. See her being brought to ground by three players and straight away it's Fredericks. The experienced Fredericks gets over that ball. That's a massive turnover for the Wallaroos. Oh, New Zealand have picked the pocket from the Wallaroos. Charmaine Smith got up and contested and the man has put boots a ball. It's going to bounce brilliantly for Duplessy. Vahakula in the left-hand corner. Well, they punish them at the line-out time through Charmaine Smith, and they finished it out on the edge through their elusive backs. Brilliant work. Well, once again, the World Player of the Year, Rua Deman, co-captain of the Black Ferns, steps up and shows her experience and her exceptional skill set with this. Firstly, from the experienced Charmaine Smith, who wins that line out and just a little dab through there. Duplessy picks it up. Quick little pass off to now. Baja Colo, And they're in with a corner and everyone is out of their seats. Christina Sue. Oh, they certainly are celebrating that try. And why wouldn't you? Very selfless of Duplessy to give that ball. But the master class of demand. She can just see space, execute the skills. As you see, the Black Ferns looking to reset there with some deep breaths because they're going to go again. That's what's so exciting. Over 70% position 50% territory because they like to play with the ball and play most of the time and that's what's exciting about this Black Ferns outfit that's their DNA they love to play with the ball their attacking mindset it sure is good to watch Demant hooks this one away to the left so it will remain at 19-0 and how brilliant for Vahakolo, her very first international try and well and truly deserved, honey, because she's followed a similar path to you, Ki Kiwi Fern and now Blackfern. Oh, she's an exceptional young athlete, isn't she? She just competes for everything. She's earned her right in the black jersey, holding out a few other players. There's plenty of competition as they kick short here, the Wallaroos. Lots of time. Can't play advantage off. Well, the All mindset ten. was there, wasn't it, honey? But just the execution wasn't right because Dallinger noticed that there was absolutely no Strong. one there marking okay. that 10-metre line, but she just didn't kick it far enough. Take a look here. Strong? Strong. Okay. Yeah, kicked it straight back into herself. She did catch the Black Ferns unaware, though. So it's something they'll have to watch out for leading into it. But once again, they get a midfield scrum, as as and scrum they have been scrum. dominant in this set-piece area. And Christina, you know plenty about Karis. You coached her 
What's your thoughts on her career path? Oh, I think she's making the most of her opportunities. Still very young. And she's a Crouch. player that will play instinctively, like you saw there, Five. trying to do something different, and you have to against this Black Ferns outfit. Six. So, you know, experiencing these mistakes, I think it'll only grow her resilience. Nine. Marino Tauhinu with a loopy pass Nine. to Mali Epo. And Australia Bounce saying it was five. out on the full, but assistant referee Natasha Gandhi said no, it bounced first. So another opportunity here, but again, this Australian team have just had absolutely no territory. Step out. 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 Step out, please. It's 50-22. It landed inside the 22. Thanks. Well, it's been good connection here during the line-out between Ponsonby and Charmaine Smith. This time they change it up and go to Bremner, but still at the back of the line out nonetheless. Ponsonby gets the ball back in her hands. They've been absolutely crisp at set piece when it comes to line out the Black Ferns and demand as she does so well, carries right to the line, ball in two hands, putting defenders in two minds. Again, Ponsonby swerves the hips, get away, gets away from the first defender. Murray, while she was coming in on an angled run from the right. Marina Tohino back to Bremner, who won the line out earlier. Tackle! Relief! Tackle! He's just short of the line, couple metres. Murray puts the head down, looking for her second. Ball is there for Marino Tohino. Good work, thank you. Gives it away to Demant, goes with that deep pass. Duplessis, simple draw and pass, and Vahakoro is going to go bang, bang, and get her second test try in this game. Well, it's all execution and accuracy, isn't it? They've had all the possession, all the territory, and the results are starting to flow. So good to see them when they've got full rhythm going on. Look at this pass. The long ball there from Luahe Demant. Quick ball from Duplessis. And Vahakolo now scores her second for the night. She does that so well, Duplessis, able to square players up, selfless, get it to the edge. But Black Ferns are playing with a style that they've been direct up the middle, but also drawing those Wallaby, Wallow Roos defenders to find that space on the outside. It sets this game slightly pushing out with the lead here, even though the Wallaroos were quite competitive for the first 10 minutes or so. Demant with the strong win. Strikes it well, but it just hooks away to the left. So score is 24-0. Four tries to none at the moment for the Blackfins. And Australia really struggling to get into this game purely because they just haven't had their hands on the ball, honey. Well, this is where they look to their leaders, isn't it? And they've got plenty in their team. Cheer them up front. Chancellor there. We haven't seen her with ball in hand much. The defense has got to be key here. Bryant to rule. You down. mentioned Chancellor there. She is affecting the tackle. Murray with a little fake. Well, we know the bag of tricks that Crystal Murray has up her sleeve. Marino Tohino. Michaela Tuu. Again, so strong on her feet. Michaela Tuu just accelerating forward. They've got space here goes Marina Tohino does well to support. They've got numbers galore to their right hand side. If they can get their Mali Airport fires a pass. Great, great spot tackle coming in as well from Paul Murray. But the work of Mikael nice, Tu. Play on, good contest. Pass the ball off the ground, do the Black Ferns. Just seem to have their tails up. Thank you. Rule to Ponsonby, goes to her plate. 
so much rugby together. Canterbury, Matatu, Black Ferns. Such good synergy as Smith has ball in hand. Ponsonby once more. Marino Tohinu to Demat. Demat puts boot to ball this time, but it's straight into the arms of Australia. But it's a, another net game for New Zealand because they're still inside the 22. And again, Australia under pressure. Oh, Faitala Moleka, the young 18 year old, didn't have a whole lot of options back here. But look at this once again, Sylvia Brunt, or Michaela Tuu, sorry, just constantly a force to be reckoned with, finding players inside and outside of her. And they're just throwing everything at this Wallaroos yeah. team. Yeah, it's hard for me to judge if you're stepping back. Now take a look at this possession, 79% for the Black Ferns. As we said, Australia just have not been able to play their game. They're playing defensively. Territory again, 68% for New Zealand, only 32 for Australia. But the biggest one has to be the time in opposition, 22. Australia have not been in New Zealand's 22. This time we've seen them all affected by the Black Ferns. Going forward ever so slowly, but it is still going forward. This time it gets a little bit of momentum, but Masters is in there. Binds. The penalise for changing their binds. So another opportunity here for the Black Ferns. Brunt gets a pass to Matt. Maliepo has some space now. Gets that offload away. In the hands of Australia, though, and these penalties creeping up again once more. Just ill discipline for Australia. Eight changing by Well, there'll be no ball. question in what their decision is to go here. You know that they're chasing tries as they've done so this whole half. Under Masters, penalise there. Once again, they get a great opportunity with the line out been really effective throughout this yeah, they I'm just chomp away at the bit here with the driving more ponds be tucked in behind right protected by Fords. yes you're good again they favor the back jumper it's Bremner they pull the ball away though and give it to Mikael it's all offload to Kennedy Simon Two metres short now. Marina Tohino, line speed is good from the Wallaroos. Bremner still trying to muscle forward a metre short. Marina Tohino, Demant with that back deep pass to Brad. Brad has still got to keep going. And Brad is over. Longley Polotto, Le Mapa Atai, Sylvia Brad. Her first try of this game, and I won't be surprised if it isn't her last. Oh, well earned try, isn't it? Such an instinctive player. Huge skill set, and she does all the work for this one. He's been busy this whole half, but look at this. Bumps off one, clear line to the try line. She finger up, she's happy with that one, Christina. Oh, it just shows her power, and Fredericks is a great defender. Uh, she'll just never stop pumping those legs. Such a powerful runner. She was looking for the pass as well, but the Wallaroos certainly need to tidy up their discipline. Back-to-back -back penalties in this world class outfit of the Black Ferns. Just going to keep seeing the points extend if you keep giving away penalties like that. Well, that was Brunt's 10th carry of the game in the first half. Her and Ponsonby both on 10 carries apiece. And we've said their names plenty of time. Working so incredibly hard as the hooter sounds here at FMG Stadium. 31 nil is the score here and that is half time in Hamilton and while it's really been an onslaught for the Black Ferns 
Absolutely dominating here at the moment. Australia yet to score a point. 31 points to nil in the Laurie O'Reilly Cup. No more hooky my welcome back to FMG Stadium where it's been complete dominance by the Blackfields over Australia. 31 points to nil in the Laurie O'Reilly second test. Let's go and get some insight into the Australian and New Zealand caps with Sione Fukafuka and Steve Jackson with Christina Sue. Kia ora, Sione, thank you for your time. Look, opening 10 minutes was positive. What do you see are the positives from that first half? Yeah, so for us, we haven't actually had an opportunity in the Black Ferns half, but credit to them. They've used the wind really, really well, and obviously their offload game has stressed us. Um, but what we're, the positives we can take out of it is when we've had the ball a few times, we've bent the line. So what we're looking for is to use the ball, get into their half and have some possession and hopefully turn the scoreboard over. Nice. And Laurie Kramer, she's down with a bit of an injury. Is that just you monitoring that? No, it looks like um, Laurie may have done her ACL, so it's more of a yeah, treatment now. And obviously young Fatala comes on and um, has her opportunity. A real shame, but all the best for the second half. Thank you very much. Cheers. Steve, thanks for your time. Look, healthy scoreline. What is, what's your summary of the first half? Yeah, look, um, we've done some things really well, but we've just got to be quicker to the breakdown. You know, they're slowing our ball down. Um, so we think if we can get there a little bit quicker, we can open up some space for us out wide. What have you noticed about the Australian defensive line? Yeah, they're coming at us hard, which we've um, practiced for and prepared for. So, again, it's just holding our feet, making sure that we're carrying. Body height's going to be really important in the second half. And, you know, they'll have the wind at their back. So, you know, I'm sure our girls will want to hold on to the ball. If you look to extend this uh, score line, will we see some deputants get on a bit earlier? Yeah, of course. You know, that's the plan. You know, um, you know, they'll probably get on a little bit earlier than expected as well. So, and that's not reflected on the score. It's just a plan that we've had in place, ready to go. So, you know, it's going to be pretty exciting for them and exciting for the rest of the group, I think. Absolutely. All the best for the second half. Thank you. As Sione Pukapuka said, they really just need to get their hands on the ball. No changes at half time, but as Steve Jackson alluded to, look to see some of these debutants in Veliko Sa'i and Mate'ele pretty soon, honey. Very good timing for the debutants to come on for the Black Ferns, but the Wallabies, the Wallaroos, sorry, they do not give up. They would have had a good chat at half time. Their tails will be up, they'll be ready to get in the fight and turn the second half around. Just that one change in the first half, Moleka came on to the field. Fatala Moleka. I just you. heard that Mori Kramer has done her ACL. We sent her our best wishes. Okay. for her recovery. Australia ready? Well, Luahe Demet has done three ACLs and look at her now, the World Rugby Player of the Year. So, always able to come back from an injury, but here we go, Australia, what can they deliver in the second half? This is a good run initially from Masters. Does that kind of go for what Australia currently need? Again, they march a couple more metres past that advantage line and they've got a penalty that. too. Fantastic start the for the Australians. The Good start, strong start for the Wallaroos. And you've got to take hats off to Ashley Masters. She's been extremely busy throughout the first half. Such an influential leader in the team. She likes to disrupt the rocks, constant competitor, and see her real never give, never give up attitude. Talakai to throw the ball in here. She's made the most tackles for the Wallaroos, 14. And unfortunately, they've knocked that one board. So they have rare opportunities inside the Black Ferns half. And they've caught the ball up. So they'll be wanting to pin the Black Ferns down here with some strong defence. Vantage over. Vantage is over. Here goes that show and go from Brunt. Duplessy tries to unleash Paul. Gets away from one, still going as Merirangi Paul. Well, she scored four tries in two games as Merirangi Paul, but it's going to be the Wallaroos now with ball in hand. Stewart, a rare touch. High tackle. High tackle Five. too, so another penalty early for the Wallaroos. We're going to take the shot here. Interesting decision from the Wallaroos, but... It was good to see the ball finally get in this player's hands. Maya Stewart 
out of the Waratahs. She's got plenty of power in place. She's explosive with the high shot there. Correctional. Charmaine Smith being good on her return to the black jersey last played in 2019. Real inspiration to many mothers out there, often juggling her trainings with her shift work as a policewoman. See her doing gym sessions at 3, 4 a.m. before her shift. Amazing athlete who deserves her black jersey again. And first points on the board for the Wallaroos through Karis Dullinger. And a really interesting decision to go for the kick, Christina Sue. What did you make of it? Yeah, when you're down 31 points, uh, it is interesting. They had back-to-back -back penalties. They had the momentum with them. Thought they would have gone, well, maybe seven points. But, hey, they've got the win behind them and it is quite strong. So they'll be just looking to grow some confidence in there and let's see if they can have another good start off this restart. Well, they could be thinking back to the June Test match. Remember, they went down 50-0 to the Blackburn, so they get the donut off their back this time round. They'd only ever been held 2-0 to Blackburn in 1997 the last time, so they won't want a repeat of that one again. And while they've spilt the ball board here, and it's that hard work of Kennedy Simon. They spoke about her at halftime and her impact. And remember, this is her first test match at home. A real stalwart for this region. Well, she's just battle hardened, isn't she? She just never gives in to anything. She competes for everything. Just offers such ruthless defence. Wallaroo's really struggling to contain her. You look at the tackle stats already. They're well over 100, with the Black Ferns only making 23 tackles so far. You can see starting to compound on the Wallaroos. A couple of niggles being picked up. Look at that, 115 tackles to 23. 14 missed tackles. This is the other big one for me as well. Okay. Time in opposition 22, almost okay. seven minutes compared to 15 seconds for Australia. That's exactly what their assistant coach said, isn't it? They just haven't had their hands on the ball, and it's also telling on the defensive stats, right? Time back on. Yeah, absolutely, Taylor. They do have the use of the win this half, so hopefully you see the likes of Karis Dellinger step up and start to work them into some territory to get into this fight, but at the moment, they're back on defense. The Black Ferns got a midfield scrum. Bind! Set! It's gone straight down. I would have said in favor of Australia there, so they will have another reset. Yeah. Such a big battle, isn't it? Got Eva Kapani there, the tight hair prop. She's getting plenty of pats on the backs from Sarah Nagama. They're up for another go. Yeah, it wasn't out that time. Yeah, but just make sure you're starting from an onside position. You're starting from an onside. Crouch! Again, the Wallaroos applying pressure to that Blackburn scrum, but Demont does well to scramble. Big tackle on Mully Apple. The ball has been knocked back. And so they will put the kick in, and it will be Australian ball, but we saw this in the first half. They really struggled to exit. Yeah, and it's got to start with the accuracy of the throw. Plenty of pressure on Talakai with this to nail this line-out throw. We've seen the likes of Charmaine Smith and her impact on the defensive line-out as well as Maya. Ruse in there, disrupting. Accuracy was there this time for the Wallaroos. Can they exit? Well, Kennedy Simon absolutely cleaned out after trying to contest that ball. Dallinger puts in the kick. It's going to bounce in out eventually. Probably didn't get as much distance as she would have hoped. 
First over throw for the Black Ferns. And spilling the ball for two was Brad Masters has ball in hand. He worked so well for them initially in that first half, the line out, but this time it's overthrown by Ponsonby. They came into this test match, the Black Ferns with 87% line out success. And that's the first one that was unsuccessful today. It's a little bit too high for Shemaine Smith. But it's a good positive for the Wallaroos. They start to grind. The Black Ferns down. Try and work into some territory. Hold position. Crouch! Bind! Set! Yep, you can see it well and truly clear. They win early, the Black Ferns, so they go quick with the tap, Australia, but they kick it away straight away and into the hands of Baha Koro. It's bounced backwards though with the sun in her eyes here in the afternoon in Hamilton. Still fighting is Baha Koro. But he not so he knew to Murray at first receiver. Duplessis spins out of the tackle of Pumare. But he not so he knew another handling error this time from Amy Brault. It's been a real Achilles heel for the Blackburn team today. The handling errors. So we'll have yet another scrum in this game. And considering the beautiful conditions, we've just had so many errors, honey. Yeah, a few errors coming in from both sides there, but there's a plenty of pressure coming in from the Wallaroos. In terms of their mindset, seems to be a bit of a shift in momentum in this half. Like one, Seen them, they've won the last two set pieces that we see some changes coming in here, Christina. Yep, as you can see here. Oh, we've got a day very opportunity. Number 17, Chris Miliko. She's on. Thank you. And also Tanya Kalinavala is also on. For Amy Rule, so front row is a subbed off, but massive opportunities. These are some decent minutes. Chris Miliko is going to get as well. Special opportunity for her and her family today. Named the Auckland Storm Player of the Year on Monday, Chris Baliko making her debut as they said, Christina, a very special moment. You can hear the roar from the crowd and she's straight into the thick of it in her work in a scrum. Set! And there she goes, what an impact on your debut. Chris Baliko and then bumping off. Karis Dallinger's Mikaela too, while they're good friends off the field, not so much on it. Here goes Brunt as well. What a scram from Veliko, giving her team good front football. Roos as well now, you can see the Black Ferns forwards have their tails up from the scrum. Kalona Valley also coming on to the field too, making an impact. Low pass for Maliepa, while they've gone backwards here, the Black Ferns. Thank you. Good work. And Australia may have turned this That's ball over matter. here. You can keep playing it. In fact, they haven't. It's still on the side of the Black Ferns. Vahakolo with a half break. Demant smothered in defence by Australia. One more carry for Ponsonby. Make that her 11th in this game. Hard working front rower. Here come the quick hands out the back. Kennedy Simon hanging out on the right edge, got a tuck and carry. Tries the offload too poor, but actually finds the hands of Dellinger. So Australia with some rare possession. Well, they've got so much skill in their team, they just haven't been able to unlock it. In front. You can see they're trying to play a territory game through Moleka, but they really do need to hold on to that ball. As Mali Airport puts in the low stabbing kick and they pass it deep. Back to Morleka, she's going to put in Six another two. kick as well. Thank you. Goes over the head, turning Vahakoro around. That is a brilliant kick. A metre away from being a 50-22. 
Vahakolan. On the trap. Third contact between those two players and Stewart and Vahakolo. Stewart came off second best. Marino Tohino Demet. Veliko with a first carry, and what a carry it is! Dream debut for the Auckland Storm. Lucy Prop and lovely hands being shown from her team as well. Kalona Vale picks up the ball, marches forward a couple metres. Great impact from the bench for the two front rowers, and well, it's just been knocked on at the base of that rut by Mali Airport, but. Honey, how about the injection of Valiko and Colony Valley? Thank oh, look, you. there's so much going on in that phase of play, and you have to look at the big run here from Chris Valiko. Very special moment for her to get her first run, get some work under the belt there. But look at the transition play between the Blackburns and the way their ability to play out in the wide channels and bring it back in tight. The skill set of the forwards and the backs has been exceptional, but also the ball and play. This is the kind of rugby we want to see, just that continuation, the building of their continuity has been exceptional. As they take a little bit of time here with another Wallaroos player down and play, but you can see the leadership coming in from Marihiana, Mareno Tohunu there. How good has the, Waller the Wallaroos and the Blackburns been so far? Ferns may have their hands already on okay. the Laurier Riley Cup. Right. The WXV is coming up. Water off, please. The WXV taking place here in New Zealand, Auckland, Wellington, and Dunedin. Get your tickets because the best of the best in women's rugby here in Aotearoa next month. went straight down and it almost looked like the gap was actually too big between those two scrums and they both went down. Time off. Dana Mikana too just receiving some attention. Looks like she's got a bit of blood, so there will be some stoppage here. But how good has Longoi Poloto Le Mafia Tati Sylvia Brunt been for the Blackbirds? I mean, absolute workhorse, isn't she, honey? Continuing that Farah Palmer form. Oh, she sure is. And I love that she just plays with so much confidence. She's decisive. She's got great vision, great balance in terms of her footwork, her speed, and her vision to give the ball out wide or just power on through. She could be a prop, she could be a first five, she could be a fullback. She is the full package of Sylvia Brunt. Time's on. Oh. As you see there, Kiala is going in to get some treatment and Lucy Jenkins in the 19s jersey has come on for her for this blood bin substitute. Yeah, interestingly, we have got two loose walls on the bench and Jenkins and say no. Lock cover. You'd assume Alana Bremner would go there should they need it. But Australia now hoping to score a try in this game. Good footwork and acceleration off the mark coming in from Wong. Cheatham. They continue to go to the right. Lovely angled run coming in from Kapani. And I must say, the front rows of both teams have really worked hard today. As you've got Paul Mare. Jenkins tried to get in, but cleaned out. Dallinger again kicking that ball away and into the hands of Vahakolo. You see, a big left hand bend for her troubles as well. Passing that ball back to Maliepo. Here goes Kalona Vale up against Kapani. Veliko. 
Simon has ball in hand, and this is good counter right coming in from Australia, just making a menace of themselves, making the Blackbirds commit numbers. Charmaine Smith, hint of a no hole there, but they'll continue. Kennedy Simon, big tackle made in tandem by Chancellor and Masters. Ball was available. Ripped out. It was stripped by Dellinger. It's on the ground, you can't play the ball. Oh, Kaluna Valle just couldn't keep her hands out of the cookie jar. Ball was on the ground, she was already there, couldn't help but grab it, and that is a penalty. Well, they Point. get good reward, don't they, the Wallaroos? I mean, that was a big push in terms of their defensive efforts. You can hear the contact and the impact coming in in terms of those collisions, but they stand up this time round. I wasn't completely convinced with the kicking option of Karis Dellinger there when they've been starved of possession she chose to kick away then they're forced to defend for multiple phases but they get the reward in this one and then they're taking the option now to go for points Pushes the kick away. Just playing in her third test match today for Australia. Been great to see the fans out here supporting the Blackburns, the BFFs they call them, the Blackburn fans. with the restart and steaming on to the ball is Masters Veliko gets evaded again she puts the pass away great run coming in from Masters trying to get a team on the front foot here's Paul Mari fake to go left and then accelerated herself bit of trouble at the back for Morgan nice face ball to Talakai it's Kapani, Kapani. Play on! Tackle! Well, this is the first real opportunity Australia have had. They're about 10 metres out from the line. They're going to go to the pick Tackle and go now. option through Talakai. You can see their backs are starting to line up towards that right hand side. But for the moment, Fords are going to keep it in close. No hands Captain Leonard has her hands on the ball. Assisted by Talakai, they're going to try and just continue to pick and wear this Blackburn defence down. Cheatham with a carry. This time they do a switch play. It's gone to the feet of Dallinger and she knocks it on. And they were building so nicely and the core was there to change. And unfortunately, just knocked it on. Oh, some substitutes here. You can hear the crowd roaring and that's for... Martha Madele, who makes her debut appearance, there she is. What a special moment for her and her family. She's gone on for Patricia Maliapo and a complete front row change for the Wallaroos. You've got Robinson in the number 17, Gorman, oh, Gorman in 18, and also Naden in the 16 jersey, completely substituted the front row. Well, the Wallaroos front row should be proud of themselves. Kapani and Chetham have been heavily involved in this 57 minutes. Unfortunate Five. not to get a better result with that phase of play. It was building something Six. really good there. Hit the nail on the head, honey. Chetham, Talakai and Kapani have been brilliant, but that is a, a huge play coming in from Morgan. Forcing that turnover, and all of a sudden, the Blackburn's under pressure for the first time. Excellent oh, it's a great option there. From Lane Morgan, she's been busy this whole game, putting massive amounts of pressure on Kennedy Simon in the back there. She's got great game awareness. She's a genuine attacking threat, and her ball service has been pretty, pretty sharp tonight. Crouch! Bind! Set! Ball is at the base for Master. She's going to carry herself. Jenkins breaks away, tries to get the tackle. 
on the five metre. Here come the Wallaroos. Nakama tucks her head. Miscommunication out the back, but they still have it. They've lost about 10 metres, though. And trying to the blitz this rock. Ah, the Black Ferns unsuccessful. O'Gorman has the ball. Gives it away to Chancellor. Chancellor Tango. hasn't had too many opportunities. We know how dangerous she is. And again, the forwards will continue to pick Robinson with her first touch. O'Gorman tried to pick and go off the back, but the defence coming through. And look at Charmaine Smith, stoked with the defence. It's a long gate. She's come through the gate. Hats off to Charmaine Smith. She has been such an go immense go presence go throughout go this game. There's plenty of chat going on in amongst there. Look at it. She just goes straight through the middle of it, disrupts that ruck. And it's unfortunate for the Wallaroos. They are starting to find some rhythm and build some phases. It's just nice to see them with some possession, not kicking it away, being in the back fence 22. But the defence of Jenkins, Smith up, is relentless and they're celebrating because they know how close they are to Crouch. that top try line. So really good defence there and a good opportunity for them to exit. But knowing the Black Ferns, they'll probably run it. Black Ferns are entering the 20, last 20 minutes of this game. And this is actually where they score the most points. And here comes Marino Tohinu. Brilliant break from the halfback. And it's bounced all over the show, but into the hands of Paul Demet. Now Duplessis, here goes the debutant, Mata Ele. First touch. Does well, knows the rules, gets to her feet. They go again, the Black Ferns. Brunt. That is not good. Dumped in a good tackle and spilling that ball forward. So here goes. That is over. Malika. And again, honey, they're kicking that ball away when they haven't had too much hands on the ball. So it will be a line out Sums. for the Black Ferns. Well, once again, we see the experience here from Marino Tohunu. Just exposes the space so effectively, gets the kick, and how about the bounce here for straight back into the Black Fern side? They shift the ball so effectively. Good flow. Martha Martelli gets her first touch of the ball, and she does well to stay in field, recycle that ball. Oh, Marino Tohanu, what a lovely little break, and she's clapping to the crowd because she's done for the day. There's a raft of changes here. Biri Tanahohai is on in the 21 jersey. You've got Layla Say out there as well. Debut today, special moment for the Cyclone. She's on, and also Luca Connor's on, number two. Back room! Black Ferns have possession from the line out. It wasn't pretty, the but they have it. Simon places the ball back for Paul Hire to Matt. Brunt, again, another carry from Brunt. So busy. And Australia have stolen the ball. Brilliant work. That's what's there. The breakdown. But here come the Blackfoot trying to blitz it. Unsuccessful. And Leonard clears. Tackle! Morgan comes back to the left. Still going on. Australia it's spilled out from the side. And this is lovely footwork from Wong. She just has not been able to get many opportunities. Such a pocket Is rocket as Ivania Wong. Leany. Again, Australia just trying to find some space out on the edges, but it comes apart. And Ashley Masters drops that ball. So it will be another scrum. Well, we're so very lucky to get some insight into the Australian Wallaroos camp. We are joined by oh, Lucy at Prop, Brianna Cheatham. Thank you so much for joining us, Brianna. What was the key message at halftime to get your girls back up for the second half? Um, it was to come out firing and not give up a single second in the second Make half sure and I think we've done that um, with you know 20 minutes in and not scored any points here so um, it was definitely come out firing. Brianna definitely starting to build a lot more phases and a bit of momentum there but is the option still to keep, continue to keep kicking in behind the Black Ferns? Yeah at this stage we've got the wind behind us Bye. so we're going to keep kicking and see how far we can uh, keep them back in their uh, D zone.
And for you personally as well, Chief, we were just saying how hard the whole front row for the Wallaroos were working. What's the mentality, I guess, the game plan that numbers one to three in your team um, get told heading into this match? Uh, something that we've um, come up with this week is uh, mongrel dogs. So we're coming out firing, we're being strong, we're hitting that ball up, tackling ruthless energy um, in this game. Well, your front row has certainly did that. You had an outstanding game. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Ruthless, honey, that is the key, being ruthless. And I'll tell you what, the defence has been ruthless because the Blackburns have not scored this half. So whatever was said at halftime has certainly worked. And while Wong gets there and disrupts, so the defence has certainly picked up for this Wallaroos team. And here goes Mataele with a tackle. Now come back for that knock-on. But good read in defence coming in from the winger. Yep, she's done well so far with her opening minutes. On debut is Martha Mateele. She's a real force to be reckoned with. Love to see her with a bit more time for ball in hand. And she is very unstoppable. We also have to give head, hats off to the number eight, Ashley Masters. So 24th cap tonight. She's already clocked up six tries throughout her career. She has been everywhere in this game. That's Sylvia Brunt there. She taking a bow. Had a great game. She'll be replaced by Rosie Kelly in the number 22. As you see, Alan Bluntine there watching on. We've also got Kelly too has got returned. She's gone on for Kennedy Simon. Set. Rosie Kelly into the 10 position and Demant has shifted Use out into 12. Two incredible playmakers on the field, but it's with the Wallaroos. Dallinger again employing that kick tactic, and it's got to pay dividends. In fact, it isn't. It bounces into the hands of Mirirangi Paul, but it was a good chase coming in, and they've stolen the ball here. We go and just offside. Fahakolo wanted to go quickly, and it just goes to show what they're capable of, honey. The Wallaroos have really come out with a different attitude in the second half. They've held the Blackburn scoreless so far. And the tactic of kicking in behind is starting to work for them. They're putting a whole lot of pressure on. And a good kick always is followed up by a good kick chase. And that's exactly what they're doing. As the Blackburns are forced to really fight their way out of their own half. There you go, 77% territory. It's been a complete switch around in the second half. The Wallaroos are in the strike zone. They just need to get over that try line. Oh, got a couple more subs. That's Ashley Masters running off. She's been replaced by Tua, Tua Naka Drava in the number 20 jersey. And Jasmine Hoodie White, she'll be looking to spark something. The lively. Live wire half back in the 21. Jersey, she's on. Bruce wins the line out. Jenkins marches forward. Paul Hyatt gets it to Smith. Put in a good shift today, has Smith. Paul Hyatt continues to go to the right. Rosie Kelly takes it to the line, fires a path to Mataele. Done that combination plenty of times in the Fire Palmer Cup for Canterbury. And winning this ball is Georgie Fredericks, her second turnover when it comes to the Jackal in this game. Well, once again, the defence steps up of the Wallaroos. They continue to jam the Blackburns down in their own half. They're winning the territory battle at the moment. They're doing a great job. Karis Dellinger with a kick to get them some more territory here but you can see here they're wanting to shift the ball Martha Mataele she cuts back inside Watch. but straight in sure to the replacement the prop last time I need the <laughs> and O'Gorman and then really effective turnout here for Australia it's key to ensure that they win this line out Australia on attack here we go what can they do Smith. Another good carry coming in from Lena, the oh, captain. Hoodie no. White. They go 
through O'Gorman. They're just slowly inching forward. Paul. Paul. Inside! Paul Haya. Here goes Mikaela Tuu while she's spilled that ball forward and the referee's missed it. In fact, her ARs Thanks. have come in. But, man, Fire she's blocked. such a pocket rocket. She's just come off. Come on, sorry, from her blood bin. Once again, just the interplay between the Fords for the Blackburns. Really unfortunate there with the error. But also we see Leilani Nathan out there for the Wallaroos. Out of the Waratah, she got Rookie of the Year. She's on debut. She gets her call up to the green and gold jersey. Special moment for her to debut here in Hamilton. Leilani Nathan, outstanding season for the Waratahs in Super W. 23 years old, she actually won the Rookie of the Year for the Waratahs and oh, truly deserved. Australia into the 22. Paul Marty, she's carried well. Dallinger. Play on. Here comes the debutante, gets that pop pass away. Naden. Hoodie White. Gorman. It's not really in any kind of shape, this Australian team, when they're attacking and they've turned the ball over too, have New Zealand, but. At the moment, it just seems to be one off runners for Australia. Oh, and they're going to go quickly, too. Veliko, brilliant pass coming in from a front rower. Mataele was chopped around the ankles by Wong. Oh, Hyatt. Gets it to Smith, and Gorman's come off second best there. Just went high on Charmaine Smith. And again, Hohaya goes quickly, but she was just in front of the mark there. Hold on. Just time off. And again, yeah, time off. we're half an hour into the second half, and the Black time Ferns off. have not scored a point. They haven't scored yeah, a point, yeah. and they've barely been out of their half. Sure and okay. I'll tell you what, okay. sure. this player here, she's come on and, and made a massive clear. impact as O'Gorman. Tough as nails, this one. Doesn't need a head check. She's all good, she reckons. Okay. Do you want to take a look at it? Yes. Doesn't help okay. either for We're the Black Ferns that of the last five penalties, they've had four of them. So you're certainly seeing the possession swing back towards the Wallaroos. And it's not like the Ferns, you often see them scoring. Uh, a special moment where both sides have cleared their bench. On the screen coming decent now, minutes. Actions of 18 gold. Well, they've gone up for the TMO. Ooh. And it's a head-on head. And you know what that means? Could possibly be a red card here. Head-on head contact. She's just gone too high in that tackle, honey. One last angle for your cat. That is the point of contact. Head-on head. 18 gold. Okay. So she is upright. There's no real mitigation there either. She comes at speed. Going up at the last minute. So Body riders up high. Highly likely they'll be looking at a red card here. Can we see it in full time yeah, from the beginning? Well, the referee just got a bit of a fright because her voice Step. is echoing across the stadium. You're taking a good look at this here. I mean, Charmaine Smith is the tallest player on the field there, so you've got to be quite upright to hit her on the head. So Zinni, I'm seeing head-on-head -head contact. We do have foul play because the tackler is upright. She is active into the tackle, so it's a high degree of danger, and we're not seeing any mitigation. Do you I, agree with those facts? I agree, 100%. Okay, so it's right Okay. Well, that was beautiful insight, wasn't it? Into seeing the process from the referees, and they refereed that brilliantly as well, so everyone can understand why they came to that decision. So. You guys heard the facts as we said them. It's upright. It's upright. It's direct head on head contact. It's a high degree of danger and there's no mitigation. Yeah, that's okay. Let's go. Let's go. Hey! Go, 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 Go,
red card for Bridie O'Gorman in her 16th test match. Well, it's a real shame for her because she has been relentless since coming onto the field. And this could be a very key turning point for the Wallaroos because they have had all the possession and territory in the second half. Haven't been able to take over that scoreboard. They'll be proud of their efforts. Luca Connor as well on to the field. Find Charmaine Smith. She's done up the fair share of the work at lineup time, and this is the most successful more we've seen from the Black Ferns, just continuing to go forward and well and truly joining from the wrong end was Robinson, and this has gone at least 20 metres at the moment. What a more Under that penalty advantage as well. Hohaya is going to clear him in numbers out the left. It's five on one currently. Rosie Kelly is going to show it, gives it to Paul Vahakola. It's a foot race out on the edge. Good covering tackle coming from Moleka. But you've got to take it back to that more. And then the ball was out. Dellinger, brilliant awareness of the rules. Still going as Dellinger, looking for support. Getting close to the sideline. Demant gets the pass. And wow, what a passage of play. Schumer line out, knocked on into touch. Line out. Oh, look at this. It all starts from this driving more. And you can see the likes of Luca, Connor, Tanya, Connor Novali in there, egging her teammates on. And look how crisply they shift the ball out wide, though. From Mererangi Paul to Bahakolo, she had plenty of time and space, she chooses to come back in. Bit of a bubble and a turn over here, Karis Dellinger then ends up with the ball. Right here, she takes a bit of a darting run down that sideline. It's Aritana Hohoia there, getting some treatment. Uh, she's off. a tough cookie, getting back into her work. And that's what you see, her tackles there. What Blake you see the often up. from halfbacks now, they get into the defensive line. Come They're like on. another loose board, doing some work on attack and defense. Clean line out for the Wallaroos with the pass, not so clean. Pretty white. Wallaroos looking to shift it again. They put boot to ball. Merirangi Paul. Right foot step, touch the ball. Leonard with the tackle, or higher. Luca Connor on her home patch as well. And the Chiefs Manawa. Hohaya decides to come back to the right. Kalona Valley. Always good for a couple metres past the gain line. Rosie Kelly tries to rub the ball along the ground, but it's gone into the arms. Oh, the Wallaroos. Tuino Gavadra with the ball. Good counter. Here comes the counter from the Black Ferns too. Mataele has ball in hand, places it back for Hohaya. Smith fires a pass to Connor, couldn't quite get it away to Sa'et, who was waiting for her first carry as a Black Fern. Demet yep. pounces onto side. the ball and they're offside. Yeah, so there's a ruck. Time just to settle because it has started to lose its shape this game. And Demant says, let's try catch them napping. And Leila say it with her first carry of the game, and it's a good one too. But no one there good really to support her, and it was an it. easy turnover in the okay. end for Tuino Kavadra. Flat. And Moleka tries to unleash her winger and Stewart. Seems like a lot of tired bodies out there, slow to get to the right from both teams. But a monstrous tackle coming in from Ohio. Luke O'Connor tries to blitz through the middle of that rut. Scrappy stuff from both teams at the moment. Tackle! He cleaned off the ball with Smith by Chancellor Sae. Thought knock on. she had got the steal, but another knock on. And as I, I see it, honey, it's just coming in a little bit disjointed. Fine timing, just a knock on. Yeah, a few areas really starting to fall into the structure of the Black Ferns. People that are really protected because they're all falling away the through the gate. Some faces in the yeah, second half. Here. And remember, Bridie O'Gorman has okay. been seeing the red card. So the Wallaroos are Sending down a troop. 
in terms of numbers, but they've got to make this yeah. interchange Seven now. Sub for the uh, uh, red card. With Eva Kapani having to come back on, with O'Gorman in the bin. So that'll see the likes of Emily Chancellor okay. have to Let's take find up, please. the bench in the meantime. But look, you have to take give your hat, take your hat off to the Wallaroos. There's plenty of positives that they can take from the second half as they continue to build momentum and starve Crouch. the Black Ferns of any kind of position and territory. Point. Set! Remind everyone at home, halftime was 31-0. We're eight minutes away from full-time, and it's 31-3. So the Wallaroos have had an exceptional second half when it comes to defence. Just starting to come away a bit on attack. Here's Hoodie White, waiting at the back. In fact, they're going to give it to their forwards. But met in a thumping tackle from Kalona Valle and Connor. Dallinger puts the ball up high, tries to make that contestable. Got a good chase coming in from Stuart. But Vahakoro gets away from the first two defenders. Gets away as well. I'm from from what a run coming in from Vahakoro. All the energy and acceleration from Vahakoro. They give it away now to Merirangi Paul. Backward. For higher. Finds Connor. Five metres out now. Here come the Blackburns. And Duplessis, she just was not expecting not that ball. But wow. Vaha Kolo. What a brilliant run. Well, if you want someone to galvanise a team, you got to do it this way through Caitlin Vaha Kolo. That's one, that's two, that's three. That's four, five, six. She just okay. continues to keep going, does Vahakola. The battle with her and Maya Stewart out wide has been immense, yeah. but she is definitely winning that one. Oh, to me, she's been a real standout. Vahakola, as you see some of the statistics, she is so strong. Take the time Upper off, body, out. she just bumps off defenders. She's going looking for work off her wing. You saw the lovely interplay that her and Marino Tohuna had earlier in the game. She's had a fantastic game. Here's Vahakolo, Crouch. the dual international. Honey, Vahakolo was running like a winger who's been starved of the ball Six. in the second half. She said, give that ball back to me, I'll show you what I can do. But here come the forward pack. Well, they get one back for their team as well. And what an impact from Valeko and Kolona Vale. Yeah, 100%, look, just... Shows the depth that the Black Ferns have and the selection of these debutants coming on, making such a massive impact in terms of the international stage. And you can feel the dials just starting to turn a little bit in the Black Ferns' favour. And you can almost feel that there's a few more points left in them. They'll be wanting to get some points on the board in the second half for sure. Five tries in the first half, none scored in the second. You it has been a really tight contest. Mikaela Tuu gives it to Pohaya Rosie Kelly from deep. Mata Ele going down. Again, really good work by Wong just to chop her around the ankles. You don't want to give her acceleration, neither do you want to give acceleration to this woman right here. No space for her to mat. Again, just with the fake and then the ability to change to the other arm and put the other one out for a Ben Jenkins. Jenkins with the footwork! And that'll make loose forwards around the world all proud. Brilliant footwork coming in from Lucy Jenkins. And she scores her first ever try in the black jersey. Oh, how good. First try for the Black Ferns, and well-deserved too, Lucy Jenkins. She's been busy defensively, hardly any ball in hand, but when she gets it, this is what she does. She finds that try line for the Black Ferns, Christina Sue. Oh, and you see Wallaroos all drifting on defence, saw the man change the angle by straightening up, and Jenkins, lad, she's been so deserving of the call-up to get the Black jersey, and need to see her dot down for her first try. Fantastic stuff. Jenkins 
gets the first try in the second half after 37 minutes. You also got to go back to Vahakolo for putting them in that field position. Rosie Cowley off the tee as well. Adds the extras. 38 points to three, the Blackbirds. Two and a half minutes left to play in the Laurie O'Reilly Cup. Established in 2007, the Black Ferns already have their hands on it for this year. The Wallaroos will take plenty out of this second half. Defensively, much better than in the first. But here comes the Black Ferns through Vahakolo, but it's yep. gone through the red basket and hit the deck. So you'd say a final opportunity here for Australia to really unleash their attacking weapons. See them all creeping in for the scrum here. Yep, Mark's right here. And no okay. doubt. Just take this side, Jess. Wallaroos will want to close this game out and get some points on the board in terms of that try. He's got to get through the scrum first. And there's been a real battle in this area throughout Crouch. the 78 minutes. Point! Set! Here go the Black Friends again. Dominant scrum. The impact from the bench has been immense when it comes to the full pack. And then the crispness of the passing in the back line. Met it on your point. No, 21! 21! Thank you! Here goes... Amy Diplicy giving the chase. But Moleka does really well to get that ball back. Counter is good. Counter ruck is good as well. Lucy Jenkins oh, has the hands on the ball. Feet. Less than a minute to play. They go quickly as well. Ruth with the crossfield kick. Oh, almost paid off. That would have been brilliant. It's still with the Black Fins though through Rosie Kelly. Maya Kawana Kalani Roos putting in the kick. That is impressive. Maya Roos! Well, how good is that? Not the Black Ferns done. giving this crowd a real treat in terms of all the attacking threats. They want to finish up this game yep. with some excitement, and that's exactly what they're doing. You see here the skill set of Maya Kawana Kalani Roos here. Doesn't quite go to hand. Mark's right here. We but I just love up. the confidence in these young black ferns. They really express themselves out there. The hooter sounds here at FMG Stadium and Kitty Kitty Nort. Crouch! There's a chair from the crowd complimenting Boys! their black ferns. Some rampant win here, 38 points to three. Testament to a strong first half, and the scrum has been incredible. Lucy Jenkins thought she was in again, but it's a penalty. Ohio goes quickly. Can they finish with a bang? The Blackburns duplicy gets the pass away. Paul has Martha Elliott on her inside. Oh, they do. Martha, Martha Elliott is going to put an exclamation mark on this Blackburns win and scoring a try on debut. What a dream. the Laurie O'Reilly Cup on debut, Martha Matele, smile from ear to ear, well deserved, kiss her wrist, and she thoroughly deserves that try, I mean look at this, just the heads up play, their ability to shift the ball so fast, so crisp, Merirangi ball, has a crack on the outside, finds Martha Matele and look at her, get him for the last try of this match. You might see it in the background, but the crowd went absolutely berserk. And you just see the little kids in that, <laughs> on the back there, just absolutely celebrating that try. We've certainly been entertained tonight, and credit to the Wallaroos who defended with so much heart and passion and desire. But the Blackbirds to score in their 82nd minute, it's a real statement, shows why they are the current world champions. Conversion attempt is away. So after a first half blitz by the Blackburns,
they get the win, 43 points to three over the Wallaroos. They've secured the Laurie O'Reilly Cup. A clean sweep, two from two, and a win over the Blackburn still eludes Australia. Final score, 43 points to three. Let's go get all the reaction now. From the captains, and well, they'll be very, very proud captains in that, particularly who are Hey Demant playing in her 30th game. But we've got the other co captain, equally as great Kennedy Simon. She is with Christina Sue. Kennedy, what a fantastic effort to play at home. What did you make of that game? Oh, it was very special to be at home, but I think the performance the girls put out there was physical, and, um, you know, we're just trying to explore, be brave, try new things, and um, to get our debutantes to get a couple of meat pies, I, I think they're pretty stoked. Absolutely, and changes really early. Wasn't quite the scoreline that, that, that second half. Is that credit to the Wallaroos? Yeah, I think so. You know, they've got, um, they're facing a lot of adversity at the moment. So for them to come out and just put on a good shift, you know, yeah, proud. And what messages do you have for the fans at home and the people going into WXV? Oh, just thank you so much for supporting us. Um, you know, to be at home, to have the black jersey and the Waikato um, in particular, it's just really special. Um, yesterday we got to drive past um, Roman Health Care uh, at the village and it just brings it all back down to earth, you know. We play for a greater purpose, um, but to be able to take the win tonight is pretty special. Well said and all the best for WXV. Thanks, Sui. Well, the Blackburns are now 16 international wins in a row. They haven't lost a game since France in 2021. Ever since Wayne Smith took over, they have been on an upward trajectory. But let's now head back down to Christina Sue, who has the Wallaroos captain, Michaela Leonard. Michaela, look, a much better second half. You were down a player and obviously only led in two tries. You must be pleased with the second half effort. Yeah, look, pleased to come out and um, keep them out a little bit better in the second half than we did the first. Still, obviously not the result we wanted, um, but it's a building process, and I think the shift in the mentality of the girls um, to get off the line and actually compete and be physical this week um, is a big step forward from the first Laurie O'Reilly game. So, imp imp yeah, impressed with the improvement, but still a long way to go, and we're going to keep building, especially coming into WXV. Talk about that building process. What has the preparation been like? Yeah, so we came into camp last week, had a good week uh, this week reviewing, I guess, our systems from Canada, areas we needed to improve um, and just building some of those combos again. Back home over to Australia for two weeks now or 10 days before we head back for WXV, but going to keep training over that time, um, keep building those systems and make sure that we come out even better in the next couple of weeks. All the best for the future game. Thank you so much. Well, Australia will go back to the drawing board. It was a rampant win, an emphatic win by the Blackfords. They got the win here, 43 points to three over Australia in the L'Oreal Riley Cup.